Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So it's Thursday, which if you've been following this page for a while, you know that we do our redrafts every single Thursday. I say this every week, but we started in 2020. We've gone all the way down to 2010. And today we are looking at the 2009 draft. Of course, when my New York Islanders had the first overall pick. First, let's look at the original order. John Tavares, Hedman, Duchesne, Kane, Shen, Ekman, Larson, Kadri, Glenn, Glennie, Cowan, and Paul. Puyarvi, yeah, but not Puyarvi, Puyarvi. And when looking at that, yeah, I mean, it's a pretty solid top seven. Obviously, the final three of those are busts, but we're going to be redrafting this. So without further ado, we're going to start with number one, work our, all, all, our way all the way down to 10th overall. Up first, New York Islanders instead of John Tavares. I do have them taking Victor Hedman. When looking at Victor Hedman in the New York Islanders, Tavares was definitely better early on. Tavares was point per game by like his second season. But I think when looking at this Islanders team, Hedman obviously had the far better peak winning a Norris, being probably the best defenseman in the entire NHL from around 2017 to 2021. In fact, from 2017 to 2022, he was a Norris finalist every single year with 372 points in 428 games, good for 71 point pace. So yeah, although he did take some years to develop definitely had the better prime still playing at a pretty high level although he's defensively he's pretty dog shit nowadays still a very good offensive defenseman in the NHL I think he is the pick for the New York Islanders especially when you consider the New York Islanders back in the early 2010s when John Tavares was an elite player they weren't ready to win for the most part they had guys like Josh Bailey Kyle Ocpozo is more so their later core later on so they get Victor Hedman they get their franchise defenseman and then just figure out the rest later second overall Tampa Bay Lightning's not getting Victor Hedman. They're taking John Tavares. John Tavares still is a second overall pick. I can see some people are maybe will make an argument for the guy that I have going at third. But for me, it's pretty obviously John Tavares. This, the Tampa Bay Lightning basically get the second best center duo in the entire NHL by a country mile. Obviously, Crosby and Malkin are better than them. But Tavares and Stamkos would have been absolutely disgusting. John Tavares was a fantastic player from around 2012 to 2016. He was the top five to six, five, fifth, sixth or seventh best center in the entire NHL. NHL consistent point per game guy 35 to 40 goal scorer so when looking at that when looking at the Tampa Bay Lightning maybe they don't win two Stanley Cups in 2021 and 2022 or 2020 and 2021 but I think there's an argument that they win in 2015 instead with with Tavares instead of Hedman when looking at Tavares he was a heart finalist that year first team all NHL over a Sidney Crosby in his prime and he had 38 goals 48 assists so maybe they win in 2015 against the Blackhawks but don't win in 2020 or 2021 I think they still win at least one Stanley Cup whether that is 2015 or the, the other years when looking at it, I think they do get some Stanley Cups with a John Forrest and a Steven Stamkos uh, center duo. That duo is just far too dynamic and they still get a superstar player. Although, and, and he's aged, he's aged fine. When looking at John Tavares, his first year in Toronto was worth the $11 million. Then he was a point per game guy, kind of got overhated just because of his contract. Wasn't living up to it, but was still a point per game guy every single year until this year. He's aged pretty well. Third overall, the Avalanche initially took Matt Duchesne. I have them take a guy that they took at 33rd overall in the same draft. Talk about a great one-two punch. They end up taking Ryan O'Reilly. Yes, Ryan O'Reilly was the third third pick in the second round that the Avalanche got, but clearly he had the more consistent and I'd say arguably a better overall peak than a Matt Duchesne. When looking at this, he was he broke out at 22 years old with 64 points, won the Lady Bing, and basically from then on, from what was that, like 2013 on, he was one of the better two-way centers in the entire NHL. Obviously peaked in 2019 with 77 points, won the Selkie, would go on to win the uh, con Smythe with the St. Louis Blues. Just one of the, besides, obviously, Bergeron is the two-way center of this generation of the 2010s. But Ryan O'Reilly is probably second or third when thinking about, obviously, Jonathan Taze. So third, third or fourth best two-way center of kind of his era for the most part. A fantastic player in the Colorado Avalanche. Take him here instead of Matt Duchesne. I, I think there is a debate between him and Tavares. Tavares' prime was just so much better when looking at it, especially offensively, that I do go Tavares at second over Ryan O'Reilly. Third overall, we got Matt Duchesne. Instead of Evander Kane heading to the Thrashers, we have Matt Duchesne. When looking at Matt Duchesne, his maybe best seasons were maybe better, definitely offensively, than Ryan O'Reilly. He was just so goddamn inconsistent during his entire career. His second season, he had 67 points. Then his third season has 28 points in 58 games. Then two, the following two seasons, he has 113 points in 118 games. Then the next four seasons, he only has 214 points in 317 games. Then he balls out in 2019, having 70 points in 73 games, gets a massive contract from the Nashville Predators, then has 42 points in 66 games, then has 13 points in 34 games. And basically for the last three years he has been again a very good player went from eight went for over 80 points back in 2022 but when looking at Matt Duchesne 
Again, just far too inconsistent, and especially he's not like a Ryan O'Reilly. He doesn't play selkie level defense. So in looking at this career, I think he is below Ryan O'Reilly. And with the Atlanta Thrashers, obviously, eventually the Winnipeg Jets, they do get a potential first-line center if he can actually stay healthy in this redraft. Fifth overall, fifth overall, the Kings initially took Braden Shen. I have them taking Nazem Kadri. When looking at Kadri... He was basically a very good second line center from like 2013 on. He broke out with, I believe, 44 points in 48 games in the 2013 season. And basically beyond that was a 55 to around 60 point guy. There was that one clear outlier 2022 season when he had 87 points in 71 games, but he's far more consistent than a Duchesne. Obviously doesn't have the high, high peaks, but you know, you're getting at a Nazem Kadri. And even now he still has 60 points in 71 games. So when looking at it, he's aged pretty well. So I have him at fifth overall, the Kings get their second line center for Anze Kopitar for ba- from basically 2012 on for the most part and still be playing at a high level right now. Sixth overall, the Coyotes initially took Oliver ekman Larson, which was a pretty good pick. He was a very good player early on, but I have them taking Chris Kreider. Chris Kreider was a very good second liner on those Ranger teams from like 2013, 2014 on up until 2017 when they kind of entered a rebuild. Then he didn't really have jack shit around them for like two to three years. But ever since the Rangers have been a competitive team, he has been a very, very good first liner. Obviously had that 52 goal season back in 2022. Last year still had 36 goals. This year probably going to hit 36 goals, maybe even sniff up against 40 goals. So when looking at Chris Kreider, basically the last three or four years, he's been one of the best power forward net front presences in in the entire NHL. So I'm looking at the Arizona Coyotes. Obviously, Chris Kreider can't lead an entire team, but if the Arizona Coyotes say in this redraft universe got an actual good center, he'd be very good for the Arizona Coyotes going forward. Seventh overall, initially the Leafs took Kadri. I have them taking Matthias Ekholm. Ekholm, a very underrated player. I could see an argument for having him over a Nazem Kadri or even over a Chris Kreider because basically ever since he became a full-time NHLer back in 2016, it took him a lot. It took him like two to three years longer than a Kadri and a Kreider in part. That's why I go with those two guys over Ekholm. But basically since then, He's been a very, very good top pairing defenseman, especially defensively. Doesn't really get the the insane point totals because he is more so a defensive defenseman. But you look at him in Nashville when he was partnered with Ryan Ellis or Subban, he was fantastic. Those were like the best pairs in the entire NHL. And then obviously Nashville kind of goes on the decline, gets traded to the Edmonton Oilers. And now him and Evan Bouchard are one of the best, probably the best pair in the entire NHL this season. Ekholm has been about as consistent as it gets. Just a consistent, very, very good around 35 to 40. This year, he might even get like 45 point defenseman. He is a very good player in an underrated one. And for me, you can make an argument that he arguably should go fifth overall. Eighth overall, Scott Glennie initially went to the Dallas Stars. I've been taking Braden Shen. Braden Shen, similarly to Kadri, was a very good second line center, maybe even a first line center from around 2015 up until 2021, 2022 with the Philadelphia Flyers and St. Louis Blues. Was that second line center on another guy in this draft with Ryan O'Reilly, just consistent 55, 60 points, solid both ways. The only problem is Braden Shen has kind of fallen off a cliff, especially of late. His contract is now one of the worst in the entire NHL. So he doesn't have the longevity that Ekholm, Kreider, and Kadri are all displaying. So I think he does slide into this number eight spot for the Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars, Braden Shen, I think was ready earlier in the NHL, but again, the next three, four years, he's, I don't even know what he's going to look like. He is the captain though, so he's going to get some ice time, but it hasn't been pretty. I think with the Dallas Stars, it makes sense. They already had Jamie Benn developing back in 2007. So you have your solid center going forward. Braden Shen, he's not a center, number one center body stretch, but him and Jamie Benn could have been a pretty decent duo in the mid to late 2010s for the most part before they obviously got Sagan, but you can't really factor that into this. Ninth overall, there's a decent drop off here. Ninth overall, Jared Cohen initially went to the Ottawa Senators. I have been taking Oliver Ekman Larson. Now, Oliver Ekman Larson, early 20, about mid, yeah, early to mid 2010s, even into the late 2010s, was a very good defenseman, a top 20 defenseman, got Norris, like some Norris votes, never really like was close to winning one, but he was highly regarded as a legit number one defenseman, posting around 40 to 55 points every single year. The problem was past that 2019 season, especially after COVID, 
He really fell off. He really fell off. Obviously, his contract became one of the worst in the entire NHL. Jim Benning, for some reason, traded for it, gave up the pick that eventually became Dylan Gunther for it. So they also did get kind of Garland, but still brutal trade. Uh, when looking at it, that obviously, he has not been the same player. He fell off pretty sharp at around 28, 29 years old, which is why he's a little bit lower. He's kind of like a Braden Shen, but he fell off a little bit earlier than a Braden Shen. So I have him going ninth overall to the Ottawa Senators. He's left-handed. Eric Carlson was right-handed. OEL was actually not like an all offense defenseman like an Eric Carlson. Not saying that they play together, but I think you give you give Ottawa those two guys, and they would have been very good still throughout the early 2010s, mid 2010s for the most part. And then a tenth overall, Magnus Pujarvi initially went to the Edmonton Oilers. I have them taking Riley Smith. Riley Smith. Took a little bit longer to get to the NHL, not until 2014, but he debuted, or 2014, 2015, but he debuted, had 51 points right out of the gate with the Boston Bruins, was a very good second liner up until he got drafted in the expansion draft. Then his first three years in Vegas, 167 points in 212 games, was a very good first liner. And basically since that, since that 2020 season has yet again been a very solid second liner. Pittsburgh this year, just they've sucked in general, but I think he's still a pretty solid piece. He has some more longevity than the guys that I have an honorable mention. I think He's a very good player and would have obviously been very solid in Edmonton. We had solid offensive pieces throughout the 2010s, late 2010s, and obviously now are an actual good team in the early 2020s. And Riley Smith would have been a decent add to that overall core. So when looking at the honorable mentions, we got guys like Evander Kane. He obviously just a lot of junk off the ice in just right now, the last two years for the most part. I think that personally he's fallen off a cliff for the most part. Tyson Berry, all offense, no defense kind of guy. Couldn't really put him. Mike Hoffman, solid goal scorer in his prime, very good goal scorer in his prime, hasn't really had the longevity. Darcy Kemper, good starter, very good at, at, at stretches for the most part, but has fallen off, especially of late. Thomas Tatar, uh, Lee, Paul Mary, Leonard, Ryan Ellis would have been on here, but unfortunately his career is basically done because of injuries. He was like as good as a at home for the most part, but then obviously just fell off a cliff because of injuries. So that's it. Here's the final. Hedman, Tavares. O'Reilly, Duchesne, Kadri, Kreider, Ekholm, Shen, Larson, Smith. The pretty, an okay draft. Pretty meh, if you ask me. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about these picks? Anybody from the honorable mention that you throw up here? What orders would you change with this? And I'll be seeing the next one.